Jesus. Oh. GoPro. So I'm out today to try out some new filters that I've got. I uh, was looking for something that would minimize the amount of stuff I had to take, minimize fuss, because when you're out having to do vlogging as well as photography, what you don't need is stuff that takes up more time. So I've got myself a set of the Case Wolverine magnetic filter set, and this is my first day out to give them a go. before and wanted to shoot this scene uh, so first thing I'm going to do is try out the polarizing filter to get rid of the reflections off the water and uh, there's not really any water moving in this scene I'll just go down the creek a bit to try the uh, ND filters I'm going to take one at a higher ISO and faster shutter speed because there is a little bit of breeze just to, to still the um, movement of the leaves. So at the moment I'm focusing on this plant in the foreground and I will take a couple focused a little bit further back. I don't often focus stack, not, not regularly. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing if there's areas in your picture which are a little bit out of focus it for me feels a bit more authentic that way because something that's super sharp from start to end isn't the way that our eyes see things now sometimes that can be what you want and i will do it sometimes but i'll see with this one how it turns out and whether i decide to focus stack or not now, i'm just going to take a photo unpolarized as well so you get a bit of a idea about the difference that it makes certainly here with all the greenery in the background uh, it makes the colors pop a lot more when it's polarized sometimes a bit of reflection is nice though so I think I've said before use your polarizer mindfully thoughtfully given how you you want to portray the scene and uh, you know if, if you're unsure take a few with and without and then you can always choose afterwards it's the beauty of digital I found this tree here and I really liked it sitting next to the little creek with the creek kind of running through so I thought I'd uh, take a photo of that first that was my first one and then I'm going to just go down a little bit further to some cascades and look back up this way <clears throat> the one I'm going to is not going to be very big and unfortunately the the light has really dimmed it was quite a bit brighter before even though it was a bit overcast still and it's gotten quite dark to the point where uh, 
I probably wouldn't normally need to use an ND filter at all. I'm really liking just being able to pull the filters on and off. Uh, you do have to think about what you're doing. I probably should take them off between if I stick my camera back in the bag and put the, uh, the lens cap on because I actually pulled the filter off with the lens cap. But I, I think uh, I'm really going to like these new filters. So I'm photographing this nice little scene here. There's a this little cascade in the foreground. It's not very big, but it's quite a nice pleasing S-curve leading off to the back. And that tree that I was photographing before is uh, up in the upper corner as well. So unfortunately, as I said, it's it's gotten quite dark. Normally with waterfalls, I do like to try to not go too long and keep some texture, but even just with the polarizing filter on at f11 and ISO 200, it's two seconds, I think. So I've taken one at that. What I am going to do is some longer ones as well and just see how that turns out. I was hoping that the sun would keep coming in and out which was what it was doing when I was driving up here because when you do long exposures when the sun's doing that you can get quite interesting results it's this kind of slightly ethereal uh, soft look to the light that you don't get when you're just capturing the light as it is in one moment but unfortunately it's gotten flat and uh, there's not much I can do about that but generally speaking when there's something quite close to you, if it's if it's part of the subject that is of great interest, you do want to make sure that bit is in focus. The background falling out of focus a bit is not too bad. I think this has got pretty good depth of field actually, regardless of that. Now, so we've got two and a half seconds, and then I'm going to stick the six stop ND on. Now, an easy way is to get an app for your phone. I managed to forget my phone today and leave it at home. So that was really clever of me. So the other thing you can just do is just count the clicks. So every three stops is three clicks because mine changes at a third of the stop is, is one stop. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh dear, bulb. What was that? 60. Um, oh, six. Uh, I reckon it's going to be about maybe two and a half minutes. You've got to remember when you get over to several minutes, chucking an extra 30 seconds on isn't actually that much to the exposure. If it's a two minute exposure, that's only uh, like a quarter of a stop. So. Uh, now I've got to remember how. Warning, warning, brain failure imminent. Oh dear, I can't remember how we do. Hmm, bulb, I have to hold it to him. That's not gonna work. Oh dear, what a fail. Um. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is pathetic. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I've realized there's still things that I don't know how to do with my with my camera. So I thought it had a mode in it that I could set how long I wanted the exposure to be and it would take it. I could be mistaking it with my 6D Mark II. I'm pretty sure that did it. I'm going to have to go home and have a look in the user manual. If I'd remembered my phone, I, uh, I think I've got one stored on there that I could have looked up. And then I thought I might try the live composite mode, but 
that was just complete failure. So that's embarrassing. <laughs> Things I haven't ever used on my camera before. I'm going to have to go home, read the manual and uh, work out how to do it. So what I've done to get around all this is I've done a 60 second exposure and just up the ISO to 640 to compensate. It's So just a quick update on that. Yes, I was getting my S5 confused with my Canon 6D Mark II, uh, which does have a bulb timer. Panasonic, unfortunately, does not, which is a shame because it's something that would be quite simple to implement. But anyway, uh, if I'd had my phone with me, I could have used the app on the phone to do a timed exposure, but I'd forgotten it. And I did not have a wide cable release at the time, which I have since bought to make it easy. And I have also found out that I could use live composite for doing a long exposure, but not in the way that we normally think. You, you do like a, a short, say like a one second exposure, and then it, it refreshes. It's a bit more complicated. But basically you can do a long exposure, but I wouldn't need to use like a 10 stop ND filter or anything like that. So that is something I will be trying out in the future. I think I've said this before, get to know your camera well. If you enjoyed this little outing today have a check out of this one here where I went down to some little cascades towards the start of this year it was I'm gonna have to get back there again soon because it's such a nice spot and a lot more to explore all right thank you so much for watching I'll see you all next time